Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Leader Class Ultra Magnus. This figure came out in 2018 as part of Wave 1 of the Leader Assortment. In a bit of a divergence from the typical Ultra Magnus fare in recent years, this Ultra Magnus goes back to the classic formula of just being a... White Optimus Prime. Hey, hey, except this is an entirely new mold. The cab itself is kinda trash though, since it's really easy to tell that it's just the little Magnus Man curled up into a ball. This is Energon Optimus levels of bad disguise, though at least everything tabs in. The most egregious part of this are the visible hands on the rear. Rotating them 180 degrees helps, but only barely. At the very least, they can serve as some 5mm ports for weapon storage. The other thing I really dislike about this cab is the giant gash just behind the front wheels. There's no attempt to hide anything here, leaving the robot hips visible and looking sloppy. But there is a saving grace. Simply take Ultra Magnus's trailer, open up the two front panels on each side, slide the leg connectors into the groove on the underside while making sure that the top panel hugs tightly, and finally close up the two panels to get Ultra Magnus's proper vehicle mode. Here we can see that the major conceit of this Ultra Magnus figure is its resemblance to Ultra Magnus from the Car Robots or 2001 Robots in Disguise toy line. And I gotta say, this is pretty sweet. It looks pretty nice, and it feels nice and hefty in the hands. However, it's not the best car carrier now, is it? You can't do much more than carefully balance anything on top, and good luck fitting anything inside. The rear of the carrier is clearly just Magnus's boots without any real effort to hide. Also, you can plainly see Magnus's super robot head visible in the void in the carrier. Still, I think it's pretty nice. Let's get Magnus back into his cab mode for transformation. This is your classic Optimus Prime conversion scheme, classic with a lowercase c for the record. One thing you need to know about this scheme is that all of the locking tolerances are super tight, at least on my copy. The arms locking into the chest is dead solid and won't be going anywhere until you deem it so. The front bumper moving up to Magnus's shoulder blades took me completely by surprise, as it involves the slider track being split for a waist swivel. I've only seen this on two other transforming figures before, neither of which I have. I'm super impressed by little things like this. Here we have Ultra Magnus's base robot mode, and as you can very plainly see, Magnus follows in tradition by being a white version of Optimus Prime. At the very least, again, he's a new mold, which I appreciate. Ironically, this mold is being retooled into Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime, a reimagining of the Cybertron Leader Class Optimus. It's a really nice kind of irony that, for once, Optimus Prime will be made from an Ultra Magnus. But, as it is, I really dig this robot mode. The cab forming the chest looks really powerful and dynamic, and the head sculpt looks very pristine. The Allspark Blue on the faceplate and helmet crest rubs me the complete right way, and he manages to make the red eyes look good on an Autobot. A point of contention many people have is the battle damage featured on his thighs, but I find it a non-issue, as it's pretty tastefully done. I'm going to cover Magnus' accessories more in-depth when we get to his Super Robot mode, but I'd like to take this time to bring up the fact that he comes with two C-30 Magnetic Inducer Launchers, which I love to equip on the base robot as they look like a pair of giant pistols. You know what helps Ultra Magnus wield his two giant pistols akimbo style? A ball-jointed head. Well, not really. I just needed a segue. This ball-jointed head is super duper sexy and smooth, being able to assert its character in any which way you so desire. The shoulders are on a simple swivel, but look at it, you get the full 360 degrees of range. The bicep and wrist swivels are similarly free, and the elbows bend a good 90 degrees. The waist is absolutely free, which I find astounding considering the bumper started out on his ass and made its way up to his shoulders. The hip joints are ratcheted and have a 180 degree arc of movement, and there are enough ratchets in there to get some subtle differences in posing. However, the knee bend is just shy of 90 degrees, which I find disappointing, as are the thigh swivels. Finally, the ankles tilt just enough to be effective, but not as good as Hound or Skytread. As it is, Magnus's pose ability is pretty decent, but not outstanding. The only things I would really add would be deeper elbows and knees, which I believe would do wonders for him. 
All right, before we suit up Ultra Magnus, we have to do a little prep work. All you have to do for the base robot is to flip the heels in, hide the head, slide the bumper into its lower position, and rotate the cod piece so that it features Magnus's Magnum Dong instead of the traditional Prime Groin. From there, the trailer splits into seven pieces, each of which does a little converting before being placed onto Ultra Magnus's awaiting limbs. The shoulder pads and bicep guards are simple enough, with the guards doing a simple wraparound and the shoulder pads tabbing onto the existing shoulders rather tenuously. Don't worry if you can't tab them in properly, as they'll stay in place due to sheer friction. The boots are formed from the entire sides of the trailer and accordion nicely and slide into place sideways. The top of the trailer forms the torso armor, which clips onto Magnus's spinal column rail piece and tabs into two small slots under the cab's windshield. Ultra Magnus's proper robot mode actually looks really good. That is, to a point. The paintwork and the sculpted detail is superb, looking just like an Ultra Magnus should. He certainly is a chunky boy, but he has some proportion issues that remind me a lot of the old Fans Project City Commander armor, though not quite as extreme. This of course is due to the fact that Ultra Magnus simply armors up into the form we all know and love instead of transforming straight into the carrier mode. The thighs and forearms are a tad too short, making the shins look absolutely massive in comparison. It doesn't help that his boots are about as big as his torso each. On the bright side, at least Magnus is sturdy. Now I know what you're thinking. This Magnus looks a little naked. Fear not, for he does come with his trusty traditional shoulder-mounted rocket launchers. Though of course Siege has to give them the doofy name of the WHV-1000 Simulacrum Blasters. The giant pistols from earlier can store on Magnus's boots, and were the first clue to many that this mold would be redone to become a new Galaxy Convoy, which I will cover when it comes out. Finally, Magnus sports a giant honking rifle called the RT-15 Stethoscopic Detector, which is covered in a very slick coat of silver paint. Sadly for all you animated Magnus stands, this Magnus does not come with a hammer, as has become tradition. I'm not too bothered by that. As long as he has those shoulder pads, any Magnus will make me happy. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Ultra Magnus' Super Robot mode doesn't feature any new joints, though the new head is ball jointed in the same way as the base robots. Unfortunately, it doesn't have much range outside of side to side and a slight downward bend. The rest of Magnus' pose ability is unimpeded, though his boots do have a habit of crashing into each other due to their volume. Strangely enough, these boots have an even wider ankle pivot than the base robot feet, if you can believe that. As this is my first and only Ultra Magnus figure so far, I can't exactly say if this is a definitive Magnus figure or not. Some of you might prefer the Combiner Wars version with its added height and the accompanying Minimus Ambus, as well as the cab being integrated into the transformation. However, if you're not exactly a fan of IDW's More Than Meets the Eye run, or if you prefer the Powered Convoy play pattern, or if you like how he's an R.I.D. Magnus homage, then this one might be for you. All I know is that I have lots of fun with this guy, and if you're anything like me, you will too. This has been Kick Catastrophe. It's time to transform and roll out.